planning your rural water supply sources is one of the most critical tasks that any rural fire department can take. This will eliminate the majority of the guesswork in the rural environment during structural firefighting responses. In this video, we're gonna show you some considerations that you must take when pre-planning your rural water sources. There are two primary considerations that the fire department must evaluate when determining whether or not a particular water source is viable for rural firefighting efforts. The adequacy of the source and the accessibility of the source. When we're talking about adequacy, we are talking about how much water is in the source, how long it will last, if there's any debris or overgrowth contained within the source. One of the most important aspects of adequacy is determining actually how much water is in that source. And to do that, you are going to have to perform some sort of mathematical equation. Now, this doesn't have to be super complicated, but generally speaking, we are simply going to take the length times the width of the source and then multiply that by the average depth of the source. This will give you the volumetric capacity of that source in cubic feet. Now, we know that there are seven and a half gallons of water per cubic foot. So we are just going to multiply that number by 7.5. If your source is perfectly round, you would have to modify that equation and it would be pi times the radius squared times the average depth of the source. And again, we're going to multiply that by seven and a half. This should give you an idea of how much water is contained in that source. And why is this important? Well, it's important for the fire department to know which static bodies of water can sustain long firefighting operations versus those that might only last for a couple of tanker loads. Therefore, when evaluating and determining what source I'm gonna use on an actual fire incident, I may not want to set up a tanker fill operation at a source that is only gonna give me a couple of tanker loads worth of water. If your water source is flowing, you have to perform a separate calculation to determine how much water that source is capable of delivering. In order to calculate this, we have to take the width of the source multiplied by the average depth of the source multiplied by the velocity of the source in feet per minute and then again multiplied by 7.5. This will tell us the gallon per minute flow rate through that particular flowing body of water. Another consideration that we have to take when evaluating our rural water sources is whether or not there are any seasonal fluctuations that occur. So in this source, when we did our calculation, we found that this uh, stream is flowing about 6,000 gallons a minute. This stream is flowing this after periods of heavy, heavy rain that we had over the last day or two. Normally, this stream is going to give us flows of about 2,000 gallons a minute. What you are gonna see in this video, due to the configuration that we had to uh, employ, we're using multiple hand tools on the backside of this uh, dam, and we also have a ratchet strapped rig to the ladder itself to make sure that we don't have the dam collapse completely. So, what we're getting ready to do is employ our twin tube drafting configuration and see exactly how much water we can get from this operation. The next biggest consideration that must be evaluated is the access to your particular water source. And in many instances, this is the one variable that limits our ability to use particular sources in the rural environment. One variable to consider when evaluating access is the lift present at the water source. Typically, when we discuss lift, there are three definitions that are discussed. We talk about theoretical lift, 
maximum lift, and dependable lift. Theoretical lift is the highest height that a pumper can be in a perfect world. And technically speaking, if we were to create a perfect vacuum, we would be able to lift water, theoretically, 33.9 feet. However, our pumpers are not capable of creating a perfect vacuum, and therefore, that number really doesn't mean anything to us on the rural fire ground. Maximum lift is defined as the highest height that a pumper can be in the real world to lift water to it. This is generally considered to be 25 feet when we're talking about sea level. Although we can operate at a maximum lift of 25 feet, it is important to recognize that the flow out of the pumper in this configuration will be minimal. This is because at sea level, we only have 14.7 PSI of atmospheric pressure available to push water into the pump. When I am drafting, I am using that atmospheric pressure to overcome two things. First is the lift present. The second variable that atmospheric pressure is utilized for is to overcome any friction loss that is in the hard sleeve uh, connected to the pumper. If I am operating at 25 feet above the water source, essentially all the atmospheric pressure available to me is being utilized to overcome gravity. This leaves almost no atmospheric pressure available to overcome any friction loss in the hard sleeve itself, making maximum lift scenarios less than ideal. In these instances, we want to focus on dependable lift. And dependable lift is referred to as the highest height that I can be above a water source and still achieve a good usable fire flow. This is generally considered to be about 15 feet. So when I am pre-planning my rural water sources, I'm always looking for access points that put me no more than 15 feet above the water. Because that's kind of the magic point where I have enough atmospheric pressure to overcome gravity, but I also have enough atmospheric pressure available to overcome friction loss in the hard sleeve that I'm using. A common misconception in the American Fire Service is that it is impossible to draft through more than 20 feet of hard sleeve. The 20 foot that we are talking about is in reference to vertical lift. The maximum lift, as we discussed, is about 25 feet. But when we're talking about horizontal distance, it is possible to hook up 20, 30, even 50 feet of hard sleeve and reach horizontally. As long as the pumper over that 50 foot span is not more than 20 feet above the water source. It is important to understand that lift negatively impacts the ability to draft much faster than the friction loss in six inch hard sleeve. In training events, I have been able to draft through over a hundred foot of hard sleeve and achieve flow rates in the thousand gallon per minute uh, range. So it's important to understand that horizontally, I can connect many sections of sleeve together in order to reach a distant water source. When evaluating access, another consideration is the operating surface in which the pumper will be on. If the surface is soft or it is unsafe for the pumper to access the water, it can negatively impact your ability to use a particular source for a rural fire. This is where performing a long reach operation with multiple sections of hard sleeve may become really, really important. Paved accesses and boat launches are obviously some of the most preferred water sources in the rural environment because they allow the fire department pumper to access that water very, very easily. However, these sources may be too far away to make their use practical. It is important for the fire department to recognize 
that the closest water source to your fire scene is always going to be the best source. For example, if you have a 700 gallon per minute source that is a half a mile from your fire scene, it is still going to allow you to flow more water at your fire than a thousand gallon per minute source that is four miles away. While a long reach operation is going to allow you to access that water using hard sleeve, the problem becomes whether or not the department has the necessary hard sleeve to reach 50, 60, 70 feet away from the pumper. The question the fire department must ask is how long will it take to assemble that equipment? And are there other options available to them either during the fire incident or ahead of the fire incident to make use of that water? Another tool at the fire department's disposal are water educting devices. These pieces of equipment utilize the Venturi principle to deliver water to the pumper from distant sources. These tools will allow a fire department to access water that they otherwise thought was inaccessible. Dry hydrants are installed near water sources to eliminate the need for the fire department to hook multiple sections of hard sleeves together in order to reach a distant source. While these tools allow us to reach these distant sources, they do come with their own set of disadvantages. Number one is that they are typically made out of PVC pipe. The issue here is that they are exposed and subjected to the weather all year round, making them susceptible to damage. This is why it is critically important to first inspect the dry hydrant and flush it to ensure that there are no uh, cracks or any damage to the dry hydrant that would make it inoperable. Another potential problem with your dry hydrant is the possibility for wildlife and veg vegetation to grow around the strainer. If this occurs, it will negatively affect the available water from the dry hydrant. Again, this is why we want to make sure that we back flush the dry hydrant assembly before attempting to prime it. Typically, dry hydrants will provide a flow rate anywhere between 750 and 800 gallons a minute. During rural water supply operations, if a particular source is being used to fill tankers, it is ideal for that source to be able to provide at least a thousand gallon per minute flow rate. This is because NFPA 1901 recommends and requires that tankers be capable of being filled at a thousand gallon per minute flow rate. Now, a dry hydrant may fall short of that thousand GPM flow rate. However, it is still a good option if it is the closest water source to your fire scene. Once you have identified a usable source, it is critically important for the fire department to document that source in some type of pre-plan. These pre-plan documents should include, at a minimum, the location of the source, any obstructions that may be present, any challenges that may be present, and most importantly, if the source is to be used for fill operations, a diagram of how the fill site should be laid out at this particular source. This information should then be shared with all mutual aid companies because they are typically the ones that may be asked to serve as a fill or supply pumper at your rural fire. Pre-planning your rural water sources is one of the most labor intensive activities that you can perform in the fire department. However, doing so is going to pay mass dividends in the event that you have a fire in your community. So it is critically important that you get out, you evaluate your sources, you train and attempt to flow water from these sources in order to be successful on the rural fire ground. If you wanna take your water supply skills to the next level and get greedy with your water, Reach out to the experts at TFT.com.